Welcome to another episode of Clash Course. We've been gone because I've been editing Clash Bash games, and Alex has been busy doing lots of fun things on his channel. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to just step in. We're hitting top eight. Uh, we went through the season. We've seen a lot of fun decks. Uh, you can go back and watch a lot of the Clash Bash mm -hmm. in there. Not all the games are up, but we got the majority of them up. I have a stockpile of games that will probably release uh periodically as uh between seasons um but we just didn't get them just didn't get them out to commentary that's all it is yeah but there's a lot of fun stuff in there uh, for sure but we have top eight um and from that we have a uh, fun data to show so mm -hmm. we're just gonna shift over here um and look at some of this interesting data points that we have on here so um, this is kind of where I keep track of all the Clash Bash matches. So we have um, our data that comes in here. I'm just going to show weird stuff, um, which then feeds into here, which then feeds into our fun analysis. Such a good tab. I, I love this. Looking at all this data here. <laughs> yep. So this is this is our data tab right here. This is a fun one. Um, as you can see here, it's not like we have a ton of games, but we have enough to like start kind of seeing what's happening on here. Um, so top level stuff, um, as you see here, most most hero has is, is seven wins or seven games. So we got Betsy, Dromai, Kano, Labaya. So we're calculating total games. We're calculating the wins. Then we're giving a win percentage. And then this is my favorite part. It just took me a little bit to figure out. Mm, this um, is wild. <laughs> <laughs> is that we actually have um a breakdown of their matchup so like if i go on betsy here i'll slide down here okay and zero percent okay betsy's beating dromaya 100 percent of the time kano 100 percent of the time ko Lavaya. um and obviously we don't have a lot of data in here um but you can just scroll down and start seeing the matchup um overall though so i've set this up so anything future is going to keep going in here. So one of the things I did in this overall hero breakdown is I actually have the date on here. So I can sort by date if I need to um, and have that hit the analysis by date. But right now we're just trying to get games, right? Like mm -hmm. just tons and tons and tons of games. Right. We need the data. We just need the data. Um, I've also been talking with some community members who have been doing um, armories and stuff. I'm seeing if I can get data from them. Um, because I'll actually start inputting their data if they can get me lists of like, okay, so and so won this game against this hero and start getting nice. me that data. I'm going to start putting that in. Um, there has been talks of us making a form public. I know we talked, we weren't sure if we wanted to do that or not because people could manipulate the data. Mm -hmm. We might do that anyways, just because I don't, we just have so little data that I'm like, yeah, someone could really manipulate it, but like, I just don't think someone's going to really do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't think it's I don't think it's so we're not you know, it's not like a very serious operation that we're running here <laughs> to the point where we're like, yeah, every single point of data is super. Yeah. It, it needs to be I, we would just you know, we have a lot of trust in our community and we'd imagine that if they were going to report something like that, that they're going to do it in a, a fashion that makes sense to help continue to build a to build a meta for mm -hmm. for Clash. So for sure. So the very interesting points. There's a couple of interesting things that I want to call it. Number one, Betsy. It's really been one player playing Betsy. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been just... Uh, I think they had a little trouble at the beginning. Uh, but I know you faced against OK and got mm -hmm. destroyed. I've... I, I, I faced him early on, so I don't think I hit his... his more tuned list. Right. Um, so I didn't feel like it was a struggle, but... Um, yeah, there's there's definitely something there because I've seen some mm -hmm. games since then that have shown me otherwise. Dromai, I think you were the only one on Dromai at this point. I'm the only one on Dromai in this game, so we're we're rocking her to the, the best of our ability. And I mean, obviously, um I kind of the reason I picked Dromai one, because obviously she's probably one of my most favorite heroes, but two, um, I still feel like, especially with the addition of rares, she's got a lot of her same tech that she does in classic instructed you know you play d reacts you play sigil solace you play the dragons you have the access to the dragons in here as opposed to commoner so uh i feel like it plays very well but sometimes it really doesn't and i i don't i don't think i have much i still think i get absolutely destroyed into 
uh, most Guardian matchups, and then also Ninja for sure will end me. What's interesting mm-hmm. though is you, excuse me, you were talking about not running Dromai in top eight, and you decided to lock in Dromai. I did. I did. I I had thought whether because honestly it was one of a couple things right i was looking because i have a decent amount of the bravo specializations thought about possibly trying out bravo with no uh nobody has run bravo in our our clash event yet so i was like that'd be a pretty interesting little dark horse to come in because let's be honest dominate in a young hero format is insanely good Mm -hmm. but um I was like, no, you know what? I, I'm still missing a couple things and I don't have civic steps. So I really wouldn't. I'd have to worry about getting all that. And I'm comfortable playing Dromai. I've been comfortable playing Dromai because um, it was either that or possibly even Icelander. Um, mm-hmm. Icelander, we ha- we do have uh, Teppa on Icelander, yep. uh, our, our wizard, our wizard main here. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, we can't deny the fact that Icelander still has quite a quite a solid running in. Yes this format so yes icelander so let's see icelander has five total games three wins the one of the only icelander losses was actually against me on i was on um we, we showed that game mabogsley and elaine did it and um, I, was, I was on vincent yeah. and that's just like a good counter because i'm getting you know a lot of times you're getting out free stuff mm-hmm. set it up and so like he i think he gave me like 15 frostbites and i was able to get through that yeah. um, but that's few and far between and, and i think that's one of the fun things about clash format is you get those weird matchups that you're number one you like icelander you know rotated before Vince even came into the game so like mm-hmm. that matchup never existed um you, you do have the matchup in blitz but in cc um that matchup oh no icelander went in blitz too right yeah, Icelander's gone in Blitz as well. Yeah, so like you're never gonna get that matchup in general. Um but also like the powerhouses like Icelander, Icelander is a powerhouse, let's face it, mm-hmm. in, in Clash. You get these weird decks like Vincent that's just like I'm just I don't care. I'm just gonna destroy you. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, that's what it's... we've seen in in the in this data here that's super interesting is because like let's look at um stuff that hasn't been played so if it has this a lot <laughs> right here like arachne solitary confinement okay that's you know benji bolton hasn't been touched bravo mm. that's an interesting chain dash yeah no chain i was i i even thought about playing chain because i thought with the addition of the rares i mean not obviously with us restricting rosetta thorn strictly to briar I think a lot of people kind of moved away from chains strictly because they were like, well, that means I'm probably going to play, you know, Nebula, Nebula Blade mm-hmm. or I'm going to play uh, Galaxy Black. And I think people just tried to try a different thing. Heavy Hitters obviously was just like a it was a big thing for a lot of people and did a lot for their yes. own favorite classes. So yep. I feel like that's where that is. Yep. No, so no dash, which is super interesting. Mm hmm. Um, Dated all, no one's surprised by that. Uh, Dorinthia, I thought that was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are kind of the big ones that, uh, and no Victor. Yeah. Uh, no, we, um, top eight hasn't been put into this data yet. There was one Victor yeah. in top eight. There was one Victor in top eight. I think that which was you guys game. will see sometime soon. <laughs> I think that was your game too. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so th- th- I haven't put in the top eight data in here. Um, but yeah, so Victor's only been played for 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 one game, and, yep. and top eight is best of three. So you know he has you know he was one or two games depending on if he won or not, right? Um, which is you know very fascinating. Like I think Victor set up. I think we'll see more Victor though um, with Mysteria with his new specialization. Oh my it's gosh, really yeah. Good. Oh, it's and that's just really good. Like I think you know it's you're not. You have to obviously have two gold already, which isn't super hard for Victor, but the gold generation, I feel like. I truly, feel, you only uh, need one gold, though, because your shield counts. You create it. Yeah, yes, yeah. If you end up running shield, I know sometimes in builds you're running Anathos. Mm-hmm, so sure. at that point, would you be swapping it out for something else? Because um, if, if, you, if you are strictly staying to the two gold, you know, one token, one shield, you're good to go, right? You're mm-hmm. you're ready. Um and I feel like 
that's also it's it's also incredibly powerful because i don't believe you destroy the gold at all you just get another one and then you get to draw a card and then you get three might tokens and well even like if you think about it, even no even not having two you know even if you don't get the might tokens right hey one draw a card i'm gonna play that card every time mm-hmm. easy like, easy i mean one, literally in this case it's you pay one you get a gold you draw a card yep it's free you get to keep you don't lose any cards in that situation you just get to get three additional my tokens which is going to be huge because Mm -hmm. now you have more power into your golden sun turns like i i I think it's going to be insanely powerful like i even even when i i'm not going to spoil anything but obviously it going into victor it's a very close match in most cases like he's i mean it's he's able to do everything that a guardian will do but also gets to draw cards and uh clashes you know like if you're not playing a guardian or a brute you're gonna lose your clashes in most cases um obviously sometimes vincent will or like rune blade will be able to take him through with uh you know the, the wraiths and all that stuff but for the most part you're probably losing your clashes and if you lose your clash that's just insane value for victor so yep i was playing um the my top eight game which we just played uh me and rotu just recently played um he was playing a reinar uh with blo- with a uh, was it clash of agility like the block one the block that gives you agility right. you clash block. of agility yeah okay so, mm-hmm. it was clash of agility. so he's playing clash of agility um he won a couple of them's I never won, uh, right? But I did tie several times. Yeah, and that's that's good. And right, tying is still winning in in most cases. So you to know, be clear, I was playing Vincent. If anybody didn't connect those dots, it was Reinhardt yeah. Vincent, and so we I did. You know, I did tie. Now the interesting thing, um, I'm just going to call this out here, and this is even more fun, I think. So we have Ko and Ko Berserker Runt. Mm-hmm. KO for five times, Berserker went played for three times, zero wins. So KO, zero wins. all forms of KO, I didn't win a single game. I, I, after that game with you and me, if you guys haven't seen that video, you guys can check it out. But like after you and me, after I played that KO and I just got rocked due to no blocks, I was like, I'm off this. I can't do this because something, something we'd brought up previously was just the fact how important blocking is in a 20 health format. Mm-hmm. And like you're, you know, it's either you have to just have tempo the entirety of the game and draw super well, or you lose because you have to block. You're not not going to run pulping in most cases or wild ride, which are fantastic brute cards. But mm-hmm. they're fantastic in a 40 health format where you have some give to you know to to be able to return a, a decent amount of damage on a big turn. Whereas here, if your opponent comes in for 10, you what do you do? Like you're going to block it. Like you're going to block it because if you don't block it, you're losing half your life. If you're at 20 and that is bringing you ever closer to that small little break point where things like dominate and intimidate and all these other things are very much so more prominent. You, you get into Kadachi locks, you get into all this stuff. And so it's very, it's very, very difficult after you get to single digit health. It's, it's a different kind of game. You have to switch up your mindset to really, power through a hundred percent um and i guess no surprise anyone katsu ira doing pretty good um pretty good we hear a lot about katsu and ira and um kind of different uh, i know there's some clash armories where they do like once a month and stuff like that and we're constantly mm-hmm. hearing about ira and katsu so yeah. like we're, we we have our eye on them um i'm just not 100 percent sure what to do about them until i have more data like i, I don't know their matchup spread like is it just there's not enough counters in the meta that they're being played in or is it just mm-hmm. they're just that good right um or is it just like it's the best players that are on katsu and iro so right like, overall and, and that's something like i'm not going to be able to get from data but like if i'm seeing here and it's like keeps going up and up and up and they're like at a hundred percent and they're not losing or you know high numbers mm-hmm. uh, yeah, something Something needs to give, but obviously these are just this is nothing. This is this is low numbers. Yeah, as far as matches go, I mean, I think uh, as the as the Ira player, I think she's got obviously she's she's really good, 
but I think she's really good just because you can utilize next to zero actual resources, have mm-hmm. a two card hand after blocking efficiently, you can block six or seven, and then be able to come in for, you know, somewhere between eight and ten sometimes. Well, even so, just blocking with their whole hand and then just turn around and do Kadachi Kadachi for three right. is really good. Mm-hmm. It is really good, but I mean, it's yeah, it's just one of those things. I think that there's just the consistency. I personally believe, and I'll go on record saying this, that in low health formats, Harmonized Kadachi is by far oh, yeah. the best weapon Easily. in in the format, without a doubt. It's insanely powerful. You're able to, you know, if you're playing... Uh, the, the new mask of the three tails that's just huge value for you um i mean i know you played Phi during our match and you ran ember blade which is still the, still i think the move for Phi. um but like kadachis are just it's it's annoying it's annoying to be able to just okay pitch a pitch a blue zero which you can fill your deck with and then be able to come in for at least three damage on ira two damage on katsu but it's definitely a lot more terrifying on Ira because Katsu cares about his on hits for his, his attack yeah. actions as opposed to his weapon attacks, whereas Ira's just like, I don't care what comes second. It's going to get plus one. So yeah, well, I think Benji, Epps, Benji yeah. could probably do pretty good in that, too. Could, but Benji mm-hmm. once again requires a, an attack action to get a plus one on there. Mm-hmm. So like you're looking at, you know, exactly what you described with Ira, block two, then turn around, swing right. eight to ten. Um, and I'd, so I'd like Ira to can do that as see. well. Yeah. She also can do it where she just blocks with three cards yep. for three every turn yep. if she wants to. So like overall, I would say you play Ira over Benji right now. It depends. Yeah. The, the no, the, the no blocking with Benji though is scary and low health. Yeah. No blocking with Benji. I mean, like you can't on a low format, low health for, I played Benji back when outsiders, uh, came out for pre-release and I was like, I'm I'm set in. This, this is gonna be the hero to play. Like you have to play Benji. Um honestly, with the amount of people who are playing Guardian and also with the new helmets that came out and heavy hitters, um Benji, not anywhere near as terrifying personally. Cause I feel like yeah. Benji really drops out to armor. Because you can't block with a card from hand for the two blocks, but you can block with armor. And if you're trying to come in with a crazy good on hit to deal a bunch of damage your your opponent can just block with their armor and you get you know unless you have an attack reaction ready for it you're really not going to get much much value so yeah. um and then yeah overall it's kind of just you know one ofs in here we got azuri briar yoji i did play a game with yoji i think he's really good I just 100% weird, yoji's busted undefeated i played i played a weird <laughs> build though too i didn't even do a block up build heal build like i did a a mill clash build mm-hmm. uh, so it was kind of a weird build but it was fun azalea azalea is really good um i know row two's on azalea for for top eight uh um, mm-hmm. really really scary azalea did beat me. i played him in the regular season he absolutely destroyed me with her i have played azalea and destroyed other people you and i just had a fun match yep that was a great and, time <laughs> and you were fine and you did nothing for three nothing. turns and then died. three three red in the ledgers in a row i feel like is not even nearly as possible in in cc let alone the fact that it happened so often in clash you can <laughs> azalea crazy. you can easily I don't know what it is. I just for for my builds that I've had, um, and I actually lost with Azalea. I lost against uh, Reinar. I pulled it out against Reinar against mm-hmm. uh, Pat Smash. Good, but Pat against Pat Shaw. Um, and every turn I was getting out right of ledger. It's just Reinar doesn't care. Right. <laughs> so he would just yep. come back and smash hard, and mm-hmm. then have to do some weird awkward blocking. So like I played her well. It just wasn't a great matchup. But, right. Like, you can consistently get out red on a ledger in this format. Mm-hmm. There's also things like um, uh, there was there was a game it was also against Pasha of what he wasn't Reiner he was somebody else. Um, but there's things like I should have um, he had like turn one. I, I don't even remember who he was at this point, uh, but they did care about go again. Um, mm-hmm. But there's things like. I should have blocked with, I kept my red on the ledger in my hand on turn zero to try to, mm-hmm. you know, but like at that point I couldn't, I can't dominate it. Right. They so just blocked out. Uh, but I should have done something like 
blocked with it so then i could put it back on my deck mm-hmm. you know with 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 different stuff you have in order to do that you know put it from um i'm forgetting that monarch card for some reason i can pick memorial oh, can, yes memorial card. i always yeah. can picture them in my head and i'm like wait what is the t- what is the title i could read yeah, the I, text I, off of it i give it to you for even knowing it's from monarch i can i i knew the card i was just like i don't remember what set this is even from um, that's my problem is most cards i can remember what set and then i just don't remember right <laughs> the card thing when i need it um no but like memorial ground you get that you know you run the yellow a lot of times um mm-hmm. so you can get those out um and it just so happened that that next turn i blocked out mm-hmm. and i pulled memorial ground i was like that's it dang it i should have blocked with my red in the ledger i could have dominated it pumped it hard like so there's ways that you should play with red in the ledger that's not like necessarily normal i guess in, right. in cc you have um you have codex of frailty which would yeah. that you could block with it and codex it back mm-hmm. and do things like that so similar similar vibes but yeah she's i think she's at a great spot i wouldn't be surprised to see azalea go far um to just i think i think the even there. the fact that you know you were talking about possible like counters for ira and katsu like i mean there's there's blockout potential for both of the heroes i don't think katsu runs as many d reacts mm-hmm. maybe they do um but uh i know I in my ira, ira list ira usually does ira usually plays a heavy um ira usually plays a heavy block build they usually do like a, right. the turtle mm-hmm. like the reality of it is is a lot of times you're going eight to ten damage with it if you're hitting ten they're not blocking that all no there's no way. And then even because even if you leak one damage through red and the ledger goes through and then the most they can do is, you know, play a play a fluster fist or something. And like that's their mm-hmm. whole turn. And that's just how it's just a complete and utter shutdown. You're able to if, you, if you're able to continuously chain that red and the ledger dominated to where you need it to go and your opponent does not have proper blocking power, because even if it's dominated, you have to have yeah, enough armor arsenal. and a D react in arsenal and a D react in hand in order for that to really be like, yeah, I blocked out the spread in the ledger. I don't have to worry about it anymore, but you'll still have to worry about it next turn even yep. still. So it could be, it could be, I wouldn't say a direct counter because obviously you have to run into it, but um, it is, it, you know, zale has got great specializations. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> 100%. She is. She set up there for sure. Mm hmm. But- I think I think overall I'm actually very very happy with with the spread. When I look at this, I go, "This is um, the only thing I'm unhappy with is Ko not winning." But like, I don't know if I'm not happy with that yet. Right, it's Ko and he's dominating everywhere else. Um, so if you're tired of Ko dominating everything, play play some Clash games. Play Clash, right? I think <laughs> and, and I think even with Ko, I would genuinely believe that if I made a more like. I guess defensive ish build on KO. Uh, he's, I mean, his hero power is just insanely good, mm-hmm. but a lot of people are focusing on the being able to do agility and go with several things and that, you know, their weapons, the mandible claw. And uh, I was running ball breaker in mine, which I think is still really, really good. I think ball and, is the play. yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's a great way to just be like, cool. Okay. Let's make this happen. But like, I don't know. I feel like if I'm going to choose a brute into this format, I mean, gosh, uh, the way Henry piloted Leviathan was really, really good. But I don't think I have the gumption to play Leviathan. So I'm probably going to, if I'm going to play Brute, I'm playing Reinar because I think Reinar is super good. Mm-hmm. Being able to barraging beat down, barraging beat down, show no mercy. That's it. Like, that's a game yeah. ender right there. That's an insane amount of damage. So, yeah, interestingly enough, uh, Henry did not lock in. Lavaya, you know who he locked in. Who did he lock in? Prism. What? Oh, isn't he also on Lavaya? Yeah. Oh no, you're right. He's Lavaya Prism. Yeah, Lavaya Prism because he 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 took out the K. He stopped playing KO. Stop playing and KO. is now playing Prism Advent of Thrones. Yep. Which is real. I'm real interested to see how that runs out. I've I've looked at the deck list. All the deck lists are up on this thing too. Um, and I would. I would love to see how that matchup goes because I I tried building it myself and fidgeting around with its play style and I I like it, but in a low health format, Prism Avern Thrones already has less life also. So 
She's I'd be curious very, to see. I, I, I mean, I've been very vocal. I'm worried about Prism. You can't really do the the lock, like the infinite combo that you right. Can do. Yeah, like the you, ALS stuff. You technically can do it. I know mm-hmm. I'm very vocal about this. You technically can do it, but like your resources are so tight in Clash versus yeah. You don't have Vestige of Soul. Vestige, Vestige of Soul is huge. So it's your resource level is not being bumped up no. by one every single time you put something into the Soul, mm-hmm. and you know your fours, your four speed instant you know you also uh, don't have genesis so you don't yeah you don't have vestige two very important things so technically it is possible um Mm -hmm. but you don't you know you're not you're not really locking people out with her it's all about with her the worrying is that she can move because we have og luminaris so she can Mm -hmm. move into a a or package if she needs to Mm -hmm. i definitely have my eye on it um i do think she absolutely has some weaknesses that you keep her off a of soul and you can with the right stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you keep her off a of soul. She, she's done. Like she's right. just, just, she's just hard. Um, and I think especially with heavy hitters, like the classes that typically like warriors and stuff that typically wouldn't have that. Now warriors have good access to poppers mm-hmm. within their class. Um, yep. My Olympia build. Um, I did a quick switch up in my Olympia build. Uh, going into top eight because uh, mm-hmm. I'm experimenting heavily with Olympia, is I put in um, Wage Agility mm-hmm. because it's good. It's a popper. Um, you know, you have uh, upper hand or whatever. Um, take the upper hand, which can yep. pump it to a ten if you need it to. Um, so I have the reds in there for that, um, and that's very very scary, right? Because Olympia's mm-hmm. constantly wagering. Um, so like there's ways to get around it that I think that I think you can just you can just deal with her a little bit easier than you could um in other formats. You just have to build around it. You just have yep. to know like I'm going to run into stuff that I'm going to need to pop. So I'm going to have either main deck or sideboard sideboard super tight though. Um, right. Sideboard very or, tight. Or it's it's mainly just for AB. <laughs> so I'm gonna, yeah. first, I'm gonna, you know, run run this for a couple poppers because you know I have Joe Mai, I have two prisms. We're about to have mm-hmm. a uh, I I personally I personally am one to say, and obviously, you know, every clash player can take this with a grain of salt, but you kind of do this in common or two. Um, if you have the ability to side in any generic popper, do it. Do even it. if it's just even if it's just two. Because if you're looking for a tempo swing, especially into it, it the fact that n- we you know there's no living legend system in Clash or Commoner, uh, it, I mean, you're not going to be getting any of these illusionists out of the format unless for some reason they get a specialization that says you play this, you win the game. Uh, you're and even then you're not going to get rid of them. We just ban the card, but it's. They're always going to be there. And you need to have access to that, especially with Enigma coming out. We're going to have another illusionist into the fray. And it's just super important. I mean, even if your turn is just pay two to come in with that popper, if you have to attack with it, so be it, right? But using it and having it in your main deck, not in your sideboard, is very valuable. It's huge. Very valuable. It's so. huge. If you can find a spot to stick it, you, you stick it. I know it helps with flashes, too. Yeah, I know with Olympia, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it, but I did it, and um, mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, in any of my matches, I didn't use it for popping because I wasn't against illusionist, right. but like it never felt bad to play it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I mean it's big damage in most cases. You know, you're you're stuck with the situation where most people believe if you're playing warrior, your turn is weapon weapon, mm-hmm. whatever, right? But when your turn is ten. Because you 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 put a you played a wager card and then you played wage agility for seven or whatever. Like if that's ten, that's a tempo swing in this format. Yeah. Because if they're at four, like they, they have no option but to just go, okay, I have to respect this. I have to block with three cards or like two cards and a bunch of armor. And then you have a, a way to kind of switch shift that in your, that's a, yeah. in your and favor. With Olympia, you know, it's a wage agility. I want the agility uh-huh. for next turn so I can then go that. And so it's like, if you get an agility, you blocked out seven. I don't really yep. care. Right. <laughs> You're probably not going to have a, a huge crackback at that point. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why I put it in. Is just, and I and I like it. Um, you know, it blocks for two, so it's terrible. But uh, 
But yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, covers mostly what we wanted to do. This is available for anybody to go in and look. Um, we're just going to keep, as I get more and more data, this will be keep updating. So we'll have more view into that. Uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I know we get this question asked a lot is, why don't we just go ask Talishar for data? Uh, I have. And they said that that is not something that they actually track. I think they track like CC data, but any mm-hmm. of like their like secondary modes in there, they don't actually track against it. Uh, right. I'm sure they probably could code it in, but hey, that's just extra work that, you know. It's it's work. Bad. It's extra work for them. And I think at the end of the day, um, yeah, you know, not to not to get crazy with it, but I don't believe like Talishar data is what we want because Talishar data isn't always accurate. You know, in some cases, if we just take the Talishar data and we see that, you know, Leviah is undefeated into every one of her games, but uh, but seven of her 10 games are people disconnecting. And then they get a win. We don't really know that it's because Leviah won. We know that it's strictly because like that's the statistics that Talishar gives. So we we like you know it's it's a little bit harder on our end just to make sure that we log all of it but that's the best part about our community where you know everybody's talking with one another about what's working what isn't who's you know what heroes are dominating their formats and their armories and uh even when we're all just playing games against one another we you know we do our best to log it and see what the the general data is like and that's you know that's kind of our plan is to make sure that we're always watching for shifts. Um, you know, we don't expect these people who are at a hundred percent win rates to probably stay at a hundred percent win rate. It's just with only single digit games for each of these heroes, you know, it's, it's very easy to say that a hundred percent win rate is easily achievable. Yeah. And I think this is more of, this isn't even about like, let's create a meta. Let's find the most competitive. Cause that's the whole point of clashes. Right. We don't want it to be competitive. That's the whole point. Mm-hmm. We want you to go have fun, do your heroes thing. That's why specializations right. are in there. Let me do the fun thing that mm-hmm. my hero does. Uh, this is more of, I want to track the data for when I get stuff from people, um, especially on ninjas of like, here is a problem. Mm-hmm. Does my data reflect that? Do we have enough data over a longer period of time to be like, you're right, Ira is a problem. And right. then we can look at, okay, what can we do to help this? Um, overall, though, like Clash has been very much, uh, I love this hero, so I'm going to play this hero. Mm-hmm. And they're going to work. Um, yeah. The only one that I'm, not the only one, but uh, the one that I think I'm, I'm worried about the most is is Teclovasen, just because um, AB is always going to be in the format. Uh-huh. And so, like, I don't know how viable Tech Lev- you know, like right now, CC, Tech Levos is very viable. You got Kano and Prism does okay. I don't even, Prism can do some AB, but. Yeah, Prism does. Really. Prism does Arcane sometimes, so. Yeah, sorry, Arcane. She does do, so you might need AB, but not like all the time. Whereas I feel mm-hmm. like Dromai was a very consistent. She's doing, you know, she's doing, she's doing damage. Uh, I AB definitely. Always yeah, I definitely. One piece. I think that it will be. Um, it will be very difficult for Teclavosin to to have a huge play. Now, again, though, if you're able to somehow find a way to force, you know, four Evos in the matter of your first two turns, and you can play all those crazy good Evo cards, where you know, if you if you have well, he can gets transform like, too. It's a specialization. Yeah, and he's got a singularity, right? So like you're you've got a lot going for him. Um, but I don't. I mean, Leviah Redeemed and, Le- and Leviah Blasphemy Consumed have been super good into the format so far. Which I've been surprised um, because I've done testing and I haven't been very successful with it. But then we yeah. have some good Leviah players where mm-hmm. they have actually got, like, my Leviah build, I, I ended up getting off of it. I was like, mm-hmm. no, like, I don't think it's worth it. It's not worth the trouble. It's not worth the sideboard slot because sideboard slots are very important in this. I mean, it's just right. up a whole slot. Uh, but I think it was Henry, like Henry, mm-hmm. he, I played him a couple times with it and like, I'll get him down to one and he pulls it out where he transforms and all of a sudden he's got, you know, eight, eight health and stuff. And then you're just like, wait, what? Yep. Huge, <laughs> huge game plan. It's, it's very, um, I'm, I'm, I, by no means it's overpowered. Pulled out Leviathan but... regime, right? Cause Leviathan regime, you need like 
13 or something blood yeah, debt? You need 13 blood debt cards in your banished zone. And then, but it's exactly 13. I think it's exactly 13. Yeah. He's done that, uh, for that he's, to happen. He's done both. He's done Blasma Fed yeah. and he's done Levi Redeemed. It's same, both times. same to me. It's, it was it's, just like, oh my God. Like, I'm getting, about to getting, kill you. I think that, you know, obviously, like a play style into Leviah is wanting to make sure you can get them below 13 life because, uh, you know, obviously, I think Blasphemat uh, is way, way more powerful than Redeemed. But even still, both of these things practically turn off your blood debt. And blood debt was the thing that was really kind of killing Leviah in most of these younger formats. Um, and now you have access to a demi hero that allows you to not only. For the record, when you <laughs> let's say you're at one life and you have 13 exact de uh, blood debt cards in your banish zone and you transform to Levi Redeemed, you gain seven life because mm -hmm. you go up to eight. That's that's crazy. That's really really good. So I think the the play style's there, but I don't. Uh, I like I said, I don't have the gumption for Levi. Uh, maybe I'll learn as we go on. And uh, make Mansan proud, but for right now, uh, <laughs> Levia is uh, a little. I feel like still just has not enough to really compare against like the consistency of some of the other heroes. So. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely consistency, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think like Prism, Enigma, things like that. If they start getting popular, Levia, they'll be able to you know do some work against them. Yeah, but, no yeah. kidding. But yeah, overall, I'm like super. I, I think next season, I'm trying to decide what what I'm going to do next season because I think I want to switch it up just a little bit. I know we got the new Mysteria Heroes out. Yeah. I know we have plans to try to do some some streams together and doing some fun Mysteria content for Clash. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, like I've been very happy with this. Um, I know we're making some adjustments next season. Um, that yeah. will, as we finalize that, we'll definitely push that out. Uh, mm -hmm. But if clash is your thing next season clash bash will start uh just like before it'll start a week after the set comes out um yep. and we'll have more lockdown timelines in the future but all mm -hmm. of that stuff will feed into this data and we will keep this updated uh and you can always check it out if there's something you want to try i think overall the end goal would be hopefully to have this i would hope i would try to get this um depending on how many people we have logging but if we can get a lot of community members logging stuff into here we'll try to get you know triple digits on on all these heroes in in the next year or so um but i i like this i'm more excited about this because as more and more games happening um we can actually see like what is the real percentages of these yeah. heroes absolutely and i think that's going to be kind of the more you know important part uh you know we we also like to record our games and make sure that we send them in for uh you know for analysis right because if if we find out that it comes to the point where like a hero is shutting down every single hero like you know 14 life to zero uh then you know it might be an issue but I, every game i've played so far has come pretty down close to the wire and uh i feel like that's just a trend that that's just flesh and blood for you like you don't really have like that huge absolute domination unless you just draw no blocks and you're you don't block on purpose but i think being able to see what does well into what you get to know what your good matchups are your bad matchups are um kind of what's favored uh and that'll that'll help kind of build if you're trying to win some of these clash bashes you know if you ever if you want to enter into the the future clash bashes this data is just available, like like Nathan said, it's available for everybody. So if you're trying to look into strictly the statistics of the heroes, uh, this is also there for you to see kind of what is what is excelling and what is not. So, yep. Very right. well. Everybody have a wonderful day, and we'll mm -hmm. catch you very soon. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.